What is going on? Charles Botenston here from uh, my own office. Midtown Manhattan, beautiful New York City. You know, it's funny, a lot of people say, how do you live in New York City? It's so, oh, I don't know how you do it. It's crowded, there's a lot of people. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. This is the thing, we obviously have an enemy out there. The enemy is within, you know. The enemy is within, the enemy is without. There's gonna be a couple things that I talk about on this that may not hit you right now. And they probably will not just be like, oh, thanks for the practical advice, Charles. And I know this is very probably metaphysical to you right now, and obviously you understand the number one enemy already. However, when you start listening to very, very successful people, take Peter Diamandis. He came out with some very successful books, Bold, and essentially he says, when you put a lot of time and energy into something to make it better, you democratize it, you demonetize it, you just make it a lot easier. So in other words, cell phones, which I don't have mine around because I wanna wean myself away from it, is, is Gosh, there's so much to talk about. So in other words, he said, obviously the first cell phone nobody had, it was too expensive. People weren't used to it. It wasn't a popular thing. 10 years later, everyone has it, including eight year olds. You know, It's the same thing with anything. Tesla is finally gonna come down in price, not finally, but they obviously got their production together. Yes, it's backed up, everything else. Really what it comes down to is, why do I say that? Because that cliche is exactly what the most successful people say. You see Jeff Bezos way back in the day, in 1997, 1998, he had a, a, a Nightline, an NBC Dateline or Nightline, whatever the hell it's called, and he had an interview, you saw him, and then you see him 20 years later. No, that was every single day for 20 years, conquering the fears, conquering the rejections, conquering people saying, why are you lowering the price? Why are you offering free shipping? Why are you, you having people pay for your service every single year, known as Prime, okay? We just, we just accept accept it now. There's 65 million people, I think, in the United States that have Prime accounts. That's insane, okay? That's called subscription models that are the most successful and the only way to go. Why do I bring all that up? Because time and time again, I heard it again yesterday, the gentleman who wrote Principles, okay? Probably one of the better books out there, especially business-wise, especially very successful businesses. What he said was, he said, when he goes into fear, he likes that. And the reason being is he has trained himself that fear is progress. Fear is progress. Travis Pastrana has talked about it and he said when he feels when he feels like he has to he has to do something fearful. He hates stagnation. Jeff Bezos has talked about it multiple times. Stagnation or I forgot the word that he uses, but when 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 you have stagnation, that is he calls it stasis. When you're in stasis, he, he doesn't believe in stasis. You're either growing or you're dying, 100%, everything, nature. You're either growing or you're dying. But the thing is, when you come out of the womb, you're dying. You already have a line in, in already that you will pass away at one time. We don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know how. But at one time, you will pass away. So when you think about that, you say, okay, what's the number one thing I need to defeat in my life right now? Take small steps to this. The biggest thing is, and, and I've talked about it multiple times, I, I just want to hammer in your head that silence is power. Silence, not distracting yourself. Because this is what happens. We get on an elevator, we're waiting online, we get on the subway, we are walking down the street, we're in our apartment, wherever we have maybe a minute, maybe just, oh my God, 45 seconds. We have 45 seconds of just silence, we need to grab our phone. We need that stimulation. We need that dopamine hit, okay? When we do that, ah, so much better. I'm not bored anymore. But the problem is, when you are bored is when your mind starts going and we're trying to avoid that. I say lean into that. When you lean into that fear, that's what Ray Dalio, the author of Principles, and Bridgewater, who's the most successful hedge fund in the world, multi-billionaire, many times over. Uh, fun fact, my the guy that's the CIO now, chief investment officer, actually grew up in my town and my brother bullied him. <laughs> so uh, maybe that's why my brother didn't get a job there. But, uh, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. And it wasn't like, oh my God, we're gonna beat the shit out of him. Maybe he did, I don't know. But everyone was bullied at one time, all right? So don't, don't give me that, like, oh my God, he's bullied. Everyone was bullied, all right? 
I actually use it as Michael Jordan didn't make teams, and he uses that. Uh, Tom Brady was picked 199th. He uses that as fuel. I use that as fuel. Moving on. This is the thing. Ray Dalio says, when he sees fear, he sees progress. When he sees fear, he sees a lesson. When he fails, he calls it failing plus reflection equals progress. Failing plus reflection equals progress. What's the second part of that? Sitting in silence. What could I have done differently? How did this happen? Who could I have talked to? How in the future can I avoid this? That, that's the thing. When you, obviously everyone knows, when you keep on doing the same thing and you expect different results, it's insanity. Okay, everyone knows that. But do you really know that? Do you really take that inside and you say, when I sit in silence and I get that uncomfortable feeling that something in my life needs to change, do you change something on the outside by buying new clothes, by going on social media, by watching TV, by eating, by drinking? You try and change the outside. You try and change all of this, all on the outside. That doesn't need to change. You need to change. And, and this is what I'm gonna bring up is, there is another quote that I, that I heard is that, success doesn't give you happiness. Happiness gives you success. Or it's the other way around. One of those, whatever the case is. Essentially, people say, I'm gonna be successful and then I'm gonna be happy. No, 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 no. When you're happy, you will be successful. Because you'll say, I like doing this. I don't like doing this. Here's, here's another example. I was, I was biking to, this morning it was 30 freaking six degrees out. It was snowing and raining in New York City. And it was shitty weather. And I had to bike to the gym because Uber and Lyft and everything else, the, the, the rates were like $20 to go like 0.25 miles. I don't know, you know, like 0.5 miles, whatever. You know, New York City, it's 20 blocks, 30 blocks. And that's, that's very little, but to everyone else, it's a crazy amount. So I was like, yeah, fuck it, you know. This is what I learned on the bike ride, is that if I lean into that multiple times, then I am actually not avoiding, and of course some people take it however you want, I'm actually going into the uncomfortability. I'm actually training my brain to be like Ray Dalio, which is, I know me, I'm the biggest enemy. I have to remove the distractions of social media, which I did yesterday, deleting Instagram and Facebook. I'm removing the distraction by taking YouTube off my phone and a bunch of other applications that I said, when I'm bored, I go to my phone. But if I go to my phone and there's nothing there, I'm like, whoa, okay, like what do I do? <gasps> oh, sit in silence, number one. If you don't like sitting in silence, you have to take action. These other things that I said, when I do my affirmations in the morning, I'm in the mirror, I'm on a mini bouncer, also known as a rebounder. You could go on uh, Amazon and see what they are, maybe $200 or something like that. But it also gets the, the lymphs in your body going every single morning, and I read the same thing every single morning. I look in the mirror, so it gives you confidence. You puff your chest out, I have little headphones in, little headphones in, Bose headphones, and it's just pumping in just rock music, and it's just, it's just making me jacked up. And I think about it, and, and I just read a book yesterday, Feeling is Everything. I don't think that's the name of the title, but it was, a, it was about, a, I, I forgot the name of the author, but it was about 60 pages, came yesterday, and I banged it out. And it, 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 once you get the gist of it, but feeling is everything. You know where you were on 9-11. You know where you were when your kid was born or you had a breakup or a divorce or something because it was so emotional. Imagine putting that emotion into something you like. Imagine controlling that emotion and creating your life. Moving on, it's not the government, it's not society, it's not social media. Uh, this one girl posted a couple of days ago, she goes, she goes, society tell us, tells us that what she was saying was she's not happy where she is right now. And what she was saying is when society changes, then I'm gonna be happy with my life. In other words, she's older, she has no relationship, she has no relationship potentials, and she's old enough where she has to freeze her eggs, okay? And that really hit me because she's blaming society. She's not blaming those minor incremental decisions made every single day. Do you snooze your alarm? When you snooze your alarm and then you finally get up, do you turn on your lights immediately? Do you go for your phone? Is your phone right next to you? Is your phone your alarm? Do you get out of bed immediately? Do you have your shoes for the gym right next to you? Do you then put your work clothes into your gym bag and you leave? Do you do affirmations? Do you meditate? Do you do visualizations? When you wake up, do you go for water? Do you go for coffee? Do you go for a snack when you eat breakfast? These are all minor decisions. My day, it was funny, this morning I came in, I know this is more of a rant, I hope you guys get something out of this because I'm not, I'm not perfect, of course, obviously. And I am not even close to where I wanna be. And I noticed that, I noticed that. And 
Ed Millett has talked about this multiple times. He wants to be, when, he, when he's judged, say you go up and there's pearly gates and you're talking to St. Peter and he said, are you who you wanted to be? Do you have any regrets? Ed Millett said he wants to be side by side with the person he wanted to be. In other words, you have the person you want to be and then you have who you actually are. And if you're the same thing, there's no regret. So every single day he said he's chasing that, 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 that shadow or that, that, that image, that ideal that he wants to be. And there's always small incremental improvements, maybe one less shake at the gym because there's more sugar in there or maybe less time out in the sun or maybe you can make one more phone call. Small little things, but one more phone call every single day, that's almost 250 calls. Obviously, that's avoiding weekends and things like that. Maybe 200 more calls. And imagine your closing ratio is whatever percent, you know, 5%. So what is that, you know, 12? You get 12 new deals and then you put that money into something else and then you buy an investment and then that produces income, blah, blah, blah. You compound that over 10 years, that's 250 or 120 more deals. All right, just go back to that and then the last things. Obviously, stoicism is very popular. I've been listening to a lot of Ryan Holiday lately. You know, it's always good to get that into your life. In other words, he says things happen. Here's an example. I'm on the train and they're making all these announcements and I'm trying to read Turning Pro. Okay, it's by Stephen Pressfield. He's had multiple books, Turning Pro, War of Art, Gates of Fire, or something around that. And they're making all these announcements, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, shut the announcements up. We understand that we're going to skip 23rd Street, but they, they said it at 14th Street, then he continued while we're going, and it's on the loudspeaker in the subway. And I said, it's not that he's, there's people right now that have no reaction. Okay, I said, why do I have an adverse reaction? So that's what brought this up is it's not what, what happens, it's your reaction to what happens. Someone says no, someone says I don't wanna do business with you, the gym is closed, or it's raining now, or Lyft and Uber are too expensive. What's your reaction to it? Are you pissed off? Oh my God, I have to spend $18 to go half a mile? Or do you say, you know what, fuck it, let's get on the bike and go. It's all about your reaction to everything. The last thing I'm gonna say, and I said decisions before is that Habits this year coming up, 2019, 2020, whenever you're watching this, is going to be the game changer. What can you eliminate from your life, apps on your phone, games in your life, TV shows, series, movies, money you don't need, the amount of alcohol, the food, just something, eliminate. It's not get better habits, just eliminate that. Instead of having apps on your phone, that's the easiest way, you put something else. Maybe you put a meditation app or maybe you, you condense everything to one screen. You know, I, I think I'm gonna make a, a, what's actually on my phone. You know, my phone, I have it down there, I don't even wanna open it, but my phone literally has email, my habits tracker, which is called, I forgot the name of it. Um, I think I actually wanna do a, a video like that. But essentially, uh, that was just a big rant about people blaming the outside. You know, the president, my family, my job, my boss, my worker, my colleague, my clients. And I'm saying, uh, actually it was the board who said no to your deal, because I'm in real estate. The, the board members said no to the deal, but did you put the purchase application together? Are you gonna put it on the market? Is it a good time to put it on the market? Was it overpriced? Did you do the deal? Did you do the best that, the best that you could do? Hope this helped. If it didn't, you know, uh, I don't really care because I know that inside, Removing distractions and then implementing new habits is exactly the route that I wanna go coming into this new year. I'm gonna have better videos. I'm gonna be doing more book reviews. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.